Welcome. Thanks for coming out. My name is Aaron Peterson. I'm going to be talking this morning about uh, penetration testing Wi-Fi. So I'm going to kick things off, get right into it, and make sure everything works here. Can everybody see that all right? It's a little blurry earlier. I've got uh, two laptops in sync here, so if whatever I'm talking about doesn't match up the slides, let me know, and I'm probably off a slide or something. So, who am I? What am I going to be talking about? Again, my name's uh, Aaron Peterson. I'm going to be talking about pen testing Wi-Fi. Um, here's just a general outline of what we're going to be talking about, general pen testing. Um, one of the tools I'm going to be talking about today is uh, Y-Crawl. And uh, so, who am I? Um, again, my name's Aaron Peterson, the project manager and developer for Y-Crawl. Is that better? Okay. I'll try to scoot over here a little bit. Uh, found also the founder of Midnight Research Labs. Uh, that's the uh, research labs that uh, this project came out of. Um, also the co-founder of uh, Alpha Defense, along with uh, Bill Terwilliger, who's around here somewhere. Uh, my day job, I work on the network security incident response team at uh, Harvard, and um, kind of a you know, general uh, network security by day, pen tester by night. Uh, here's a little blurb on both Alpha Defense and Midnight Research Labs. Um, Alpha Defense is based out of uh, Boston. Uh, just a standard dis quick disclosure here, none of the views, uh, you can read it. So, <laughs> pictured a little dramatic here, but here's uh, kind of what I view to be the uh, current state of Wi-Fi scanning. Uh, Wi-Fi is everywhere. Um, I think in my hotel room last night, I, without an antenna internal card, I had about 30 different access points. Um, probably only about two of those access points were, you know, real open access points. And it, you know, it takes a little bit of work to drill down to get to uh, something that's usable. We don't really care about, um, you know, all, all the extra access points that, you know, won't do anything for us. Um, <clears throat> A couple, couple of points, uh, again, um, <laughs> WEP, you know, it doesn't mean, just because it's WEP doesn't mean that we can't get on an access point or use an access point, and also just because it's open doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we, we can get on that access point. You know, WEP, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. So, moving forward, uh, some of the different use cases uh, for some of the different groups. Uh, this release uh, is really focused more on the penetration testing side of things. Uh, Y-Crawl is a little bit more of a generic framework that, that we can use for doing a lot of different things, finding rogue access points, just getting on the internet, things like that. Um, talking about rogue, ac rogue access points, what's behind that access point? Magical land of Narnia, or the soft, chewy underbelly of my corporate network being exposed. We want to try to find those types of things. So what we want to do is search through these access points um, methodically to try to find the ones that, that we care about or are relevant to us. So a few slides here on uh, penetr uh, penetration testing with Wi-Fi. Um, Generally, there's kind of two different types of, of uh, penetration testing, and, and, and one may or may not be considered penetration testing, but it's two of the types of engagements that, that I mostly see. Um, the more traditional penetration testing follows, you know, of, of Wi-Fi specifically, is very similar to other types of penetration testing. We have a similar methodology. We're going to start with some type of reconnaissance phase. Uh, we want to do, you know, from there we move on to discovery, you know, footprinting, enumeration, scanning, those types of things. Uh, then move on to some type of vulnerability assessment phase, and then potentially some type of penetration testing itself. And then there's all the reports that come after that. But um, there's a lot of individual tools that will help us with those different types of things. Um, but they're, they're kind of scattered about, and some work and some don't. Um, and one of the things that we try to do with Y-Crawl is to wrap those up into one usable interface. Um, the second thing I want to talk about uh, with regards to penetration testing is rogue access points. Um, like I mentioned before, you can take a $20 device, stick it on your network, and completely subvert 
you know, all the security that you've uh, put in place on the exterior. Um, I'm sure everybody knows it's pretty common to have kind of a, you know, the, the, the eggshell problem where you have, uh, you know, a tough outside, but once you get into the inside, there's, you know, everything's open. Nobody thinks to patch their printer, you know, but realistically you have, uh, you know, all of your important documents going through there, so it's pretty easy to uh, get to important things. Some of the difficulties with uh, penetration testing, um, it, it really takes a long time to, you know, to really sit down and do a real scan. Uh, in the field, it often takes longer than, you know, sort of the lab cases that you see of uh, cracking, you know, WEP or WPA, things like that. Oftentimes, maybe you won't see enough clients or you won't see a WPA handshake. Things like that can really contribute to the length. So you really, you really just want to sit something down and let it, you know, sort of thoroughly scan through, um, uh, the, you know, the entire um, AP space. Um, hackers have a lot more time than uh, than pen testers. Pen testers typically have you know a week on site uh, at most, maybe an engagement to last a month. Uh, but a hacker can sit in his house and you know let web crack run or whatever it is, uh, cow patty run for for months. <clears throat> Again, there's tons of tools to do this kind of stuff. Um, general geographic issues. Uh, any type of business park, things like that, you're going to see, a, you know, hundreds and hundreds of access points in any large building, you know, any type of downtown area. So it's really difficult to distinguish between, you know, what you're actually uh, testing and what's available, especially in the case of the rogue access point. Um, it's really difficult to tell whether you're actually authorized to scan through these different access points because just because a new access point you know, appears somewhere on the network, you know, it, it doesn't mean that you're authorized to, you know, crack it and see if it's on, you know, your network. So it's kind of difficult. And again, with rogue access points, you're, you're never going to be able to prove a negative. You can never prove that an access point isn't on your network. Um, there are, you know, you can catch the 80% case by, you know, catching the, the Linksys open devices that are on the network, um, but you're never really going to be able to prove. So it's kind of a difficult thing to, to really do well. Um, Again, there's lots of different tools. I think a lot of you guys probably know most of these tools. Um, I bet a large percentage of the people have used most of these things. On um, the discovery side of things, everybody's familiar with Kismet and NetStumbler, and those are pretty common things. Uh, Web, air, uh, uh, Aircrack's pretty much the gold standard these days. It does a dozen different attacks. Uh, we try to wrap up, um, again, probably the 80% case in, in Ycrawl, but you can do all sorts of things with, with Aircrack. Um, there's a couple newer tools. Has everybody seen Westside yet? Has anybody played with Westside? No? It's pretty cool. You should check it out. It's in the, uh, the Aircrack development t uh, tree. But um, with the testing that I've done, you can crack web. I mean, the difference between six minutes and three minutes, I guess, uh, isn't too big of a, a difference. But it's really a cool tool that you should check out. And we're going to be adding a plug-in for it. Um, and then some of the other tools for web there. More of the common things for WPA, of course there's Cowpatty, uh, Aircrack can now do um, uh, WPA, pre-shared key, brute forcing. Uh, there's a whole another side of things of, of attacking the client and, and that's very cool. Uh, we'd like to add some support for that within Ycrawl, but right now we're mostly focused on kind of the I guess you'd say server side of things or access point side of things, but there's tools for that. Um, Karma is probably the, the best known and most usable one. And, the, and then there's a whole bunch of other tools that so some of these here um, are directly related to wireless, but you're still going to run a lot of the common pen testing tools for a wireless engagement. Once you get on that network, you're still going to, you know, probably run an Nmap scan, a Nessus scan, or whatever VA tool that you have. You're, you're probably going to use those types of things as well. And there's, you know, hundreds of those things. <clears throat> a couple of random notes that, uh, uh, that I wanted to put together. Probably the most important one that I wanted to get across is that word lists are, are more important than you'd think. Um, a very large number of uh, companies that I've gone to 
You know, once we've finally gotten in and, and cracked whatever password it is, that password has been based off of some type of corporate information, uh, whether it's, you know, product data, the name of the company, or some derivative, or even a derivative of the, the default password that you'd see on that system. Um, people will look at you funny. Security guards will, you know, try to detain you, so make sure you get access. All right, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to uh, go pretty quickly through the rest of the slides. Um, but, but the point of this is that uh, Y crawl can really help with uh, penetration testing in this aspect. We, we're, again, with this release, we're really trying to focus more on the penetration tester. Um, we're, we've added support for uh, FPGA acceleration through some of the work that Hikari's done. Um, if you've, probably a lot of you have seen his talk, and, and if you haven't, you should check it out because it's very cool. Um, better filtering, a bunch of new plugins. Um, we're adding new reporting, like PDF reporting, that should look more like a, you know, a general corporate uh, report. It's not actually there yet, but it'll be soon. Uh, again, it's really just a, a logical approach to penetration testing. You have a lot of the same things that you're going to do every time. So you want to just step through those different types of events um, in a logical fashion, you know, with a bunch of different tools. You can paralyze your attacks with uh, multiple cards. Okay, so here's Y crawl. Um, all right, thanks. Um, you know, more goal-oriented checks. What do I really want? Am I trying to, you know, penetrate a network? Do I really just want uh, access? Am I trying to get to the internet? What 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 types of things? Um, so here's kind of a markety type blurb. Simple Wi-Fi scanner and auditor with a flexible and simple plugin. Blah blah blah. blah. Um, Something that's pretty important too, I guess, is that really the power of Ycrawl comes in the different plugins. Uh, you saw me mention a bunch of different tools. You guys are probably all familiar with those tools, but really what, what we want to do is wrap and automate those tools so that we don't end up doing the same things over and over again because that gets boring. Um, skip the rest there. Some, some basic examples of what we can do. Um, general discovery, try to associate, get an IP address, get to the internet. That's sort of the default, uh, you know, the default operation. Then you can do more advanced things, you know, uh, for penetration testing, things like that. Under the hood, we've got these different sections. Here's the general architecture. Um, not too important. Uh, the discovery engine. Um, th this is really similar to what we have today in something like, you know, Kismet or something like that. Just something that finds the access points. Um, we, we can do multiple different uh, radio header types, a bunch of different things there. This is written by Jason Spence, who's here somewhere. Wave your hand. There he is right here in the front. Um, this is actually kind of an, an uh, outdated architecture uh, overview. We've added some things like then, like splitting um, channels. So we, when we're running with multiple cards, we can have you know one channel per card or a couple different channels or whatever overlap there is. Uh, the plugin engine. This is really like the master scheduler. Um, it takes all the different plugins, runs them at the appropriate time. Uh, this is written by me. Uh, plugins. All kinds of different plugins here. I'm going to try and skip pretty fast. One other important point is it's really based on event levels, and those event levels take us through from a new access point all the way to um, having internet access. So we want to try to get from having an access point to associating with that access point to getting an IP address, getting to the internet, and then there's hooks based around all those different event levels. So the workflow is really just to, to uh, escalate through that and get as far through the plugins as we can on a given access point. Uh, we've got different types of plugins. There's the interface. Um, here's some of the, the plugins that we have. Yeah, uh, I've talked about a lot of these already. I wanted to just walk through a couple of them. Uh, the air crack one um, is kind of neat. We, we start, you know, just put it in monitor mode, start gathering traffic, look for clients, try to de-auth those clients. Um, start uh, running fake off and running ARP injection, and then uh, really start trying to crack web. So that's all sort of automated. Um, FPGAs, again, this is one of the new things that we added. This is uh, some pretty cool stuff. You can really accelerate uh, how quickly uh, you're, you're able to crack, you know, web or, or WPA, pre-shared keys, things like that. Uh, you should check it out. Um, it, it's for a penetration tester. I think this is a pretty cool feature, and and it's worth the money to try and get one of these things. Because again, hackers have a lot more time than than we do to do these things. So to have any you know leg up on that is is uh, great. Um, here's right from Hikari's talk. Some of the performance increases you'll see. 
plugins. Here's an example plugin. Uh, profiles. This really allows you to select what you're going to run when, that kind of thing. So it's really just a description of that. I'm just going to skip through this. Um, here's some examples of how you can set up those profiles based on the different use cases. Uh, the UI, Peter, is Peter here? Peter, wave your hand. Peter did a really good job. He's been uh, adding a lot to this in the last few days. There he is, right down in the middle, comrade Peter. Um, and uh, it's really come a long ways. Uh, but I have to skip through this. That's actually old. So here's the new UI. Uh, I'm going to show a demo, so I'm not going to go into these. Profile selection. Uh, general stati status. Uh, we're releasing here uh, a new release at DEF CON. Uh, we've been adding a ton to it. We probably added, I don't know, a few thousand lines of code in the last like three or four weeks. So there will be some bugs, but we'll um, try to uh, fix those as quickly as possible. Um, there's a new uh, curses interface that we're testing. There's a bunch of stuff we want to do in the future, but I want to get to the demo. Oh, one actually really important slide, um, scanning and liability. Um, as in any other type of uh, penetration testing, really, you know, ultimately you're responsible. Um, uh, the case law on what you can, can do and can't with a given access point that's not yours um, isn't entirely clear um, that the general thing is to you know never use an access point that's that's not yours um, but uh, the point for penetration testing is always get permission you know always get lawyers involved you know get contracts insurance all those types of things just to make sure you're uh, that you're covered there's a good white paper by sands that covers a lot of this stuff um, oh I guess that was a slide off here so there's the liability slide um, thanks to all the, the midnight research guys um, Vanessa, my wife, for putting up with me the last uh, few weeks. Uh, Maddie, aircraft guys, Hikari, a bunch of different people. So what we're going to do is go straight into the demo because we're running out of time here. We're out? One minute? Okay. 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 Sorry, guys. This, the demo is kind of the most important uh, part of this. I just ran out of time here. Where's my cursor? So here's Y-Crawl. Uh, we can, uh, again, run with multiple different types of cards. Um, we can select our profile. We're just going to go through this. Uh, uh, here's an open profile. Actually, we're going to do, what's that? We'll start it. Here's uh, running in uh, discovery mode here. <laughs> this always turns into advertising. Everybody puts up their own access points. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, so we got a bunch of different access points there. Uh, th that was just running uh, discovery. So what I'm going to do is only select my access point. <laughs> All right, well. All right, we'll select this one too. But we're just going to do a default profile here. Uh, let's do the default, and then we're going to run in manual mode. So there's automatic mode, which is just try to do everything I can on all the access points I can based on the profile. But right now what we're trying to do is discover just these different uh, access points. So we can see here that um, uh, some basic information we can see right now. If we look at uh, the plugins for this, uh, let's look at which one it's running on right now. Right now it's trying to associate, it's trying to run DHCP. Um, it identified the access point. Let's look at what that was. It's an Aruba access point. So what's going to do is just sit and try to crawl through these. And, and uh, I think I have it configured to run like uh, and oh, I can look right here in the uh, in the plugins that we have selected. Come on, Aaron. In the plugins that I have selected. So these are all the different plugins that we have here, and I have, based on the profile, I have a certain number of them selected, and just running through those sequ sequentially to try to DHCP. And we can click on each access point, click in the plugin to see what the uh, output for that for that is. Uh, right now, it's running DHCP. Tried to associate where we were able to associate, and then after uh, this, we'd try to run through and uh, map everything. Okay, so I think I'm running out of time. Um, I guess there's a room that I have to answer questions. QA and where is it? Q 
Q&A in track one. I do have live CDs. Okay. So...